long distance range because maybe he's taller than you, maybe his, his reach is longer than you, and also this, the strength of his punch is a lot stronger than you, right? And also you don't want to be in this middle range because it becomes more sportive. It becomes a trade. It, goes, it becomes whoever can block faster and whoever can sneak in that punch first usually overtakes the confrontation. Therefore, you want to be either really, really far away. In that case, you want to run away and not fight the guy. Or if it's unavoidable, you got to be as close as you can as possible. Therefore, that's why yesterday we worked about um, closing the distance, opposite directions, um, slipping. Right? These are all entrances, if you want to consider it like that. Because once you enter, then you get to go into your game. Right? So if the guy's striking over here, I have to make sure I don't get knocked out, and I have to figure out how my timing can be to move in. So, and I decide that, right? The big thing, uh, we had a kid's seminar on Friday night, and I kept reiterating, you make the decision. That you commit to the movement, because when you do, it has to be explosive, and it has to be with conviction. I can't go in, he's striking here, I can't go in and go halfway, because I meet in the middle. I need to go in and pretend like I'm gonna blast right through him. Because that's gonna stop his attack, that's gonna make him worry about his base and his posture, that's gonna make him stumble a little bit, and then it also gets my hands on it. That's the ultimate goal, right? What we're gonna do here is have your right foot back and your left foot forward, and we're gonna shoot to the 45 with the hands up, and then shoot to the 45 as well. A lot of things you see in Kato where I gotta step through him so I can strike. He throws a strike and I, I shield through and I'm back in this punch ring, right? So anytime you step or you do your, your lunges, I want to make sure my feet go past his feet. And we want your hands up here, not here, right? Because here you don't, like, nothing's protecting your computer if your hands are down here, right? So if I'm penetrating Michael this way, he penetrated my hands down here is totally, totally ridiculous. If he penetrated my hands up here, it's their protected. So when we're doing these drills, a lot of times your hands are going to be and exaggerated stances, that doesn't mean go fast, it just means really understand how your body's moving. I'm not trying to rush in like this, I'm rushing in with my hip forward, right? So it's kind of like a slingshot effect. If that's really exaggerated, it should be like that. Your hips are shooting your body weight forward and your feet's catching them. My toes go this way, okay. and I go here. Oh, okay. Rotate, cat stance, toes, toes go this way, I go here. Rotate, cat stance, toes go this way. Okay. Like, yeah. 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 Heel-toe pivot doesn't really matter for now. That way you just get the coordination here. Push back. Just move my feet. He redirects, but then I still fall down this way. So it's move my base, 
and then use my hands as pretty much appendages to continue moving that, that energy towards that direction, right? So this can be, <coughs> right, this can be a push. This can be an underhook. And I'm still trying my best to redirect everything towards that direction. It comes in again. It comes in again. Over and over and over again, right? So the drill we can try is, I'm just gonna one head to one side. And all you're gonna do is rotate to one side and then rotate to the other. Rotate to one side, rotate to the other. That's the next drill we're gonna do. That way it's. So it's not exactly this, right? There's a lot of people really, it's, it's this. So your shoulder's gonna turn down into it. And then you're gonna bring yourself back up. So this lean is a hard lean. Right? It's not. It's not this. <laughs> this doesn't do push into me. This ain't gonna do anything. This is gonna do something. Right? So it's pushing this down this way. So my hand is turning this way, right? Turning over this way. You guys have this and you got this and yeah. Which is kind of perfect, right? Redirect, as I've already did. Yeah. And wizard, right? Yeah. Wizard with a hand with this, so. Right. I like to know. If you want to make it look more vicious, it's it's real. <coughs> right. And this is a drill you can do in place as well. But you always want to think about, again, the lines of energy. Because I'm going to push to the 45 this way. That's it. But before we put a partner in front of you, we just got to figure out how to walk down the line. Point is where my energy is going, right? Where my, just imagine where my arm is pointing is an infinite laser that goes that way. Infinite laser, infinite laser that goes that way. <coughs> so if I'm going here, energy here, energy here. I don't want my hip to be like this, right? So I'm seeing a lot of that. So you want your hip to follow where your energy, line of energy is going. So it's, it's gotta be here. Cause you're trying to go off center, right? Off that fatal funnel. So I'm, as I'm stepping here, I'm literally going to that 45. And then right after that, we can, we can pivot in, right? But for now, we gotta figure out a way to slip past his energy. So notice his toes are going this way, his toes are going that way. So his energy is forward. I need to figure out a way to pivot around the corners. Ideally, I always want to face them with my hip, but if I need to go around an obstacle, I need to go here before I start rotating. Okay. Now, if you step this way and then, and, and you don't shift, you don't keep your, you keep your hips pointed in this direction, it throws your alignment off, right? So it makes you easier to kind of push over. Like it would seem no, but what happens is like your hips are not in accordance with your feet. So your feet are pointed this way, and your hips are still pointed this way. So you're just going, you're just going to get knocked over like that like, pretty easily. Other thing is like this is still your your traditional way of blocking still applies here because remember this is all like in the clinch range, so it shouldn't be out here, right? It's still going to be in here, kind of a deal. So I don't want to when you're doing this day, I don't want to see this, right? It's still here, right? It's still here. So you always want to think you're you're most strong when your limbs are closer to your center. Yeah. Like you, you can't do curls with your arms out here, but you can do curls with your hands here. So as long as I attach my arms to my torso, I'm gonna have more power. Cause it's gonna be hard for me to hold him up like that. My, my structure is gonna collapse. If I keep everything tucked in here, I can pretty much solidify this attached to my torso. And then now it's my lower body that's moving. We're gonna partner up, but one person is gonna be like a human dummy. And the other person is just gonna same side push, step the same side forward, and this one's gonna sneak underneath and rotate. And you're gonna step right back. And if you don't wanna do the same side push, just put your hand here, start here, and then just step. Just to make it a little easier. Some key details here, make sure you step past this foot. I don't want to be here or here. I need to make sure my toes are past its heels. Yeah. Driving through the center is going to be like a big thing. 
that's what's going to help you like knock your opponent over, right? Getting them off their center of balance, right? So make sure you're always driving past your centers. You need to get past your center lines, so you have to get past their feet, right? If you end up right here, you're still kind of 50 50. But if your momentum's all going forward this way and you're on this part of his, uh, his shoulder, right, you have this angle to push on and take advantage of, right? Versus being right here, which right, also uh, keeps you as a target. The top of your talking about, the thing we were talking about in the beginning, the middle range is where we don't want to be. So then if we want to be in the close range, it's it's a battle of who can be on top of who in terms of their center of gravity. Um, we always think about like, you know our, our personal bubble that goes around this personal bubble. You ever watch sparring, it's usually like two bubbles clashing. It's gonna be from that middle range coming out, coming out. But try to change your mentality to be like, I want my bubbles to be on top of on top of his. Because then I'm dominating that space. Because if he's worried about maintaining his balance, then I can really do everything else I want to do. But if if we're still here, I'm worried about defending, I'm worried about trying to enter, I'm worried about my own balance. So once I step past. I need to figure out a way to, to get on top of the center, right? So it's it's like you're crawling over him. Person has his hands on you. First things first is when someone grabs you, you don't want them to let go ever again, right? Because your goal is to close the distance. That's what we talked about at the beginning of the seminar. So he, either I close the distance on him, or he closes the distance on me, when he does that, I need to make sure he doesn't let go, therefore I anchor myself to him. So any way he grabs, I anchor myself to him. Any way he grabs, I anchor myself to him. And it's just, again, the connection is tension, not just this. Unless you're, you have really heightened touch sensitivity, I want some type of lean onto him, make him carry my weight. So this is different than that. You always want that way you really understand or really know how his body's gonna move next. After he grabs onto you, and you grab onto him, you anchor him to you, you're going to dead weight by either scooting away and taking his mass with you, pushing forward, pushing to the side, or sliding to the other side. So let's actually do that as a drill. I grab onto him, he anchors, now he's gonna move in any direction he can. And I'm gonna small. I'm not just trying to grab and try to slide him away. I'm not doing this. I'm staying within my stances, my posture is straight, my hip is doing the engagement, right? So if you take the person away, it should look like a movement that you've done before. Thanks, right? It should look like driving. Here, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Not that, I'm doing, I'm, I'm binding. Right. Imagine your hip as a bottom, right? It's not like we were doing with this, this drill in the beginning. It's my hip that drives my body forward. And it's my hip that swings my body to the side. It's a, uh, think of chains on the link. You always think uh, your foot energy goes up to your knees, up to your hips, and the foot goes all along. All the way from the ground, all the way up, and then he's on the punch. Now imagine at the end of the punch, you're holding on to something. So now he's the end of the chain. Right? So that means whenever, whenever I'm moving him, it's pretty much he's the end of the punch now. So whatever you grab onto you becomes the end of the chain. Same thing with like a weapon, right? The weapon becomes the end of the chain. So now imagine the person has the end of the chain. So as I'm moving, I'm trying to move them like I'm moving myself, but an extension of myself through my opponent. Right? Hope you guys can see that that little wave motion. You see like the center, the center is what's moving my body mass around, not his not his top. Right, this is just kind of like the steering wheel, right, and, and, and the motor is this, right, so this is what's swinging your opponent around, so that's why your stances are like really important, right, like this whole idea 
looking <coughs> back and dropping is what is what pulls Michael. I, there's a difference between me doing this and me doing this, right? Me shifting my weight that way, right? Me moving forward like this, pushing, and me dropping my center down like that, shoving my hips. Not just moving forward this way, but actually <coughs> dropping my hips down like that, right? Sinking at the same time. And that's what's dragging him down, right? And if, and the grips that you have on this drill can be anything. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be this, right? This is just really common. I mean, it can be anything like from here. It's just to help develop your sensitivity and the idea around this kind of concept, right? So once I'm here and I'm dropping here, I can move anywhere I want. But see, my hips are what's driving that way, right? I'm not going this way and then push, right? Because if I start flexing this way, I might have to flex that way, right? But if I'm leading this way, it's my whole, I'm creating this kind of slingshot effect with my body. I'm looking that way, right? Anywhere, like, I can get a, I can get a grip on Michael. That's, that's all these movements that, that we do, all this kind of stuff, that's this. Like, as soon as I grip, it doesn't matter if I grip here, I start rotating it and making carry wherever it is, right? So, so I'm not pulling him at all with this. This is just me hanging. I'm just creating a, a structure with my body so that I can hang on him in my class to hold me up. And if I move this way, he's still holding me. So if Michael pushes on me, he pushes, I'm still going to make him carry. Right? Because I'm just leaning on him. This is just creating hooks and Turn your guy into a lazy boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the reclining. Just, yeah. So just roll, roll on him. Keep it, keep it that way. Yeah. Like, the amount of Effort, the guy who's defending should feel it should be like investing that. Like it's all actually on the person who's So opposite directions, just as a review, his brain can't compute when we go two directions at once. So if I go straight up, it's tense, straight down, it's tense. If I go opposite, it's going to allow me to open up, right? So if we start from a distance, here and we're, we're squaring off for some reason. I can't just shoot straight through like that. It's just gonna frame up and I'm gonna stuff. So I gotta figure out a way to go opposites. Opposites. And also when I'm stepping through, I need to go opposite and try my best to occupy the space. So let's combine the two. Occupying the space means his personal bubble, my personal bubble. Instead of bouncing off like a regular sparring situation, we're bouncing here. I need to figure out a way to put my space on top of his. So as I go through, I need to bump. I need to figure out a way to bump my center through his center, so that way I'm for sure encroaching on his space. I need to be here, not be here. Because going back to the middle range, it gives him a chance to escape and come back up. Right? So the drill for this, we're going to start again from the clinch. And you're going to figure out a way to go opposite directions in any which, which way you want, forward and back, up and down, any angles in between. And right after you go opposite direction, you step through, you bump them with your chest, bump them with your hip, it doesn't really matter. Just bump them and then your pressure. Again, connection first, tension. Opposite direction, bump. You step. Connection first, tension, opposite direction, bump, reset. You're noticing if I try to push him around here, it's going to be hard because his limb, his structure is very solid. He's leaning into it. Yeah. So I got to figure out a way to encroach his, encroach his space, occupy it so that I can start pushing. So we're going to combine that with um, opposite direction. So he's going to be, let's move away from the dummy and let's have a I'm going to figure out a way to go past these walls with my opposite directions, but then to force you guys to step past him, you're, you're going to have to either push him, bump him, or shoulder him with, with your body, right? So opposite directions, and make him take a step. Reset, opposite directions, make him take a step. And that should be a good stepping point to understand occupying the space. Go back here. So I gotta figure out what to move him around, opposite directions. Once I bump, he reframes, grabs, I anchor, move him around, opposite directions, 
We reframe the anchor, move him around, opposite directions, and go back in. So he grabs onto me, I anchor, and I start dead weighting. And I try to figure out a way to go opposite directions from wherever he grabs. I bump. He re grabs. Anchor. Dead weight. I bump. He re grabs. Anchor. Dead weight. Opposite directions. Re grab. Over and over and over. And then after that, we're going to have a switch. Alright, let's try it out. Find someone new. Can you grab onto me? I anchor. Start dead weighting. And I try to figure out a way to go opposite directions from wherever he grabs. I bump. Re grabs. Anchor. Dead weight. I bump. He re grabs. Anchor. Dead weight. Opposite directions. Re grab. Over and over and over. Right here. He pulls my posture down. I pop. Boom. Opposite directions. Push and That's going to be a switch. Whenever you feel the strike coming in, it's a switch to just bump automatically. Because then he already opened up for you, right? Because the whole goal is this, right? I need to get to here. Well, once he opens up for you, I'm already going to get to there. So I don't need to worry about lost the direction. But this is going to be a little brain game, right? So I'm here, he grabs, I anchor it, and I'm still trying to go off the directions. And if I, if I succeed at it, perfect, you say. If not, I'm still trying to go for it, and he throws that punch. I'm just going to go in, close the distance, and then come right back. So you have two objectives here. One objective, close the distance, two ways to get there, two pathways to get there. Either opposite directions, or he throws that strike, and then you're in. Do you, you guys understand that when there's tension, there's always going to be a point where you can slip through the tension, right? Imagine two trains going at it or two bulls rearing off with their horns, right? So it's usually the one that gets the right angle starts slipping off, right? It slips. There are two, two heavy pressures going at each other. When the angle changes, it's going to slip past. So if you have maintained that connection, we have two, two heavy postures going here. I dictate when to slip. It's like I'm falling into him, right? That was the big thing we did talk about yesterday. Pretend like you're gonna fall into the guy. And then that allows you to occupy his face. So one other thing is you don't I've seen a lot of this. Like you don't really ever want to be totally squared up on a person, right? You usually want to try to have this thing going on. Right? If you're totally squared up, like this is this is So you want to at least be shifting your hips this way. So, same side on the collar grip. Other hand on the inside, anchor. Other hand, whatever. And the same side on the collar grip, throws. And remember, the only way I can slip is if I had tension. So he goes back, I'm making him carry my weight, right? He throws, I slip through. And that'll be the drill. So you're going to develop the sensitivity specifically for this motion here. Throws, anchor. anchor, dead weight, try to figure out opposite directions. It doesn't work, he throws, and I'm through. Anchor, dead weight, turn the around, throws, and I'm through. Here. And as he goes into that thing that he gets through. So but going back to this, he punches on this side, I slip through, and then it, generally in a confrontation, the guy doesn't want to get elbows in the face. So most likely, excuse me, I punch here and you slip through. So I'm gonna try to do this. So then he gets to do the thing that we did in the beginning. Okay, it's like the battle, in battle rules generally that's like if you're if you're gonna scuffle with somebody, like they they try to take. Most people just fail, abandon all hope and So we're here, he anchored to me, he dead weighted, I throw that strike, boom, he slips through. And I'm like, oh no, I don't want to get punched, so I'm gonna go here. That's his chance to 
We'll drop his center, switch his hips back like we did in the, the walking drill in the beginning, and then move my energy with his shoulder towards this direction. That'll be the end of the flow. So one more time, I grab onto him. He grabs on the inside here. I'm going to start moving him around just as the antagonizer, the attacker, and he, all he's doing is angering to me, dead waiting whenever he can. Now I'm gonna strike on the same side, he slips through. Because of this strike that's about to happen, I'm gonna be here. And once he gets to here, I'm going to try to drive forward. And it's his goal now to, just, to redirect my energy to the, to the corners. Right? So it's... <coughs> Your spine is doing this thing. You're like skydiving on, on a human being, right? So we're here. My punches. I slip. I'm gonna try to go for this. He dives on me. As soon as this happens, I'm I'm doing this, right? If I can't swing it down, if I'm already here, then I'm just gonna drive it straight into the ground this way, right? So I'm looking for this thing here. You may or may not get it depending on how vicious in the drive. If you're here, when you do this, this one needs to come back because this will do nothing at this point. So this has to come back and you have to hit into him this way, right? So from here, if he's, drive, if he's trying to drive me, put me on the ground, see he's already changed his position to drive straight into me. I don't want to be here. I want to be always turning away, right? right so you don't want to, you don't want to be in front of him, right? And when he's doing that, let's do it again. I mean, even if you get stuck here, buy yourself time, dip into him, and then you can start pivoting now, right? So I said you're leading with your shoulder. That's what's happening. I'm doing this, and I'm actually driving down with my shoulder. This, okay? This foot has to come out, and you have to stay directly in front of him. Another detail here. Instead of always just thinking redirecting that way, you can also think redirecting this way and down, right? So where the head goes, the body follows. If I get, can't get to the head, get to the next best option, right? Shoulders. So if he goes into here, boom, he punched, blah, blah. I can't do anything with his head because maybe he's, he's encroaching on my space here. So I got to figure out a way to shoulder down. And then it starts looking like other things that but as I go shoulder down, so even if he pushes into me, if I if he pushes into me and I only turn talk, think about turning sideways, it's just gonna be this, right? So keep pushing into me and I push sideways. Usually that is what's gonna happen. So if I can think about sideways and downward, smash his face in the ground with my shoulder, go ahead. That's usually what's gonna happen. Changing the angle so that's a downward slope versus just vertical to the side. And you can make that as vicious as you want, depending on how heavy you make your shoulder. So if he's really, really powerful, I might need to take some time. Oh, no, 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 no. Boom. If I want to end it quickly or if he's around my size, I drop. And then it looks a lot like something you guys do, right? So, karate people don't have to be worried about taking points and pulls. Right? It's all there. Like, you can literally fall out from that. Like, you, Michael can literally not even use his legs and just drop, like, straight down. Yeah. Just boom, right there. And you can drop them straight down to the ground. Right? Let's not do that to each other here. <laughs> That's, that is an option. You guys on here, I frame on the inside. Frame here. Instead of punching on the same side, he's going to punch cross it. I slip through. Now instead of going for the hook, which is a valid option, I'm just going to stay over the top, plug his armpit, and then uh. rotate in this way. Remember the rotation curls his elbow up. You guys can stop here, or if you want to gently place your partner onto the floor, that's perfectly valid as well. Um, here, he throws a punch, boom, slide through. There was tension, I slipped. This wraps to the armpit. I go here. Take down or if you guys know a throw, throw as well. Right? Occupy the space, right? So I need to bump. That way I can work. Because if I resist this, 
Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. But resist this, a little easier for me. He's a little on, his, on the balls of his feet, right? <laughs> so, once you get here, I'm controlling his posture. I can even be real heavy on his neck here to bring his head down. It looks like follows. And also my hip bumps into this hip. This is different than that. Uh, re uh, regress base. Oh. Right now. Right? No space. Say he, he closes the distance, he bumps, and he controls my posture. I need to figure out a way to build my frame. So my frame is my it's my anatomical structure, right? These frames, these frames, these frames that you find in Kata, these frames, these frames, these frames, these frames, anything like that, right? So he's here. I gotta figure out a way to either get one arm loose and start pushing away at his head, the other one here, so that I can back myself off and build my frame again. And it's kind of like a reset for me whenever I feel like I'm at a disadvantageous position. Make sense? So I grab him, and I'm trying to pull his posture down. So the drill is going to be, I'm here, he anchors dead weights, and I'm pulling his posture down. He lets me pull his posture down. He needs to rebuild his frame and rebuild his posture. And we reset. I grab him, he anchors to me, I pull his posture down, he rebuilds his frame. Notice opposite direction is moving right there, right? Take the person away, it looks like my hunch. I grab him again, pull his posture down, he anchors to me, he rebuilds his frame, and we reset. That was an opposite direction there too. I pop. Pop anywhere, pop, rebuild, sorry. Pop anywhere, pop, rebuild, right? You guys on the knee, pull the pocket down, pop, rebuild. So anywhere you feel that you can throw a little pop just to soften them up so that you can rebuild your structure a lot easier, you not work against his strength, that's, that's gonna be it, right? It puts his intention to where that pain is just came. I do this, he pulls my posture down, I need to pop, boom, before I build, rebuild my frame. Let's say everything's already there. We did went through the whole sequence, and now we are here. So you guys, you guys will, will, will realize when I try to move in, he's going to have his own frame as well. And if he tries to move in, I have my own frame to redirect. So let's actually start from here. And the person's going to push into you, and you're going to work your footwork to move his angles Either his, my form is across his neck, either so I can move up, depending on if he's pushing this way, or if he's pushing downward, I move it down. That way we have a sensitivity on this Shuto UK type of frame, right? The other hand can be here, just so that you have an idea of where this arm is going to be. We have a touch sensitivity. So it's gonna be here, same side to the same shoulder, the same side hand, resting on here. I'm leaning onto him so there's tension and my frame is on his neck, so we're tension. I can hook here if I want. If not, I'm just gonna have this here, have this here, have this here, it doesn't really matter. The main key thing is, the pivot point is my forearm across his neck. Any which way you wanna do it, doesn't really matter. For now. The drill. You go back to here, he pushes me a little bit back, and right when I feel this contact, I'm gonna try to push it so that he can frame it. Side, try to the frame on here and just keep the frame on there as you step through. Right. He throws a punch, boom. I move around a little bit. I gotta figure out a way to move this arm. This works too. Any way you can move his energy so that you can sneak underneath it. And it's also, you're not moving it so up, or you're not moving yourself so far down, you're beating in the middle. Right. It's all the exact same thing, right? It's just, how do you clear the arc in this position? 
tussle a little bit, and I'm gonna try to go underneath it. Keep this hooks on the shoulder for now, for this specific technique. As I go underneath, I clamp them to me, this goes here, right? Go on the head. And then from there, you can take them down this way. Turn the chin, take them straight down. Still the arm there. Take the person away. So that movement that we did in the beginning where we were stepping and sliding, that's exactly what we're doing here, right? So we're going 45, boom, slide. Notice when I anchor myself to him and I slide, he's gonna have to move with me, right? So now I'm pulling his posture now. So you add a strike to that, boom. Let's do that specific technique just so that we can help visualize it in a concert itself. I know in the Pinot Showdown, this arm goes out, but you can say, if this arm went out, or I'm here and this arm goes out, it's the same thing, right? Right, it's the same, same thing. But for now, let's just do this one so that it's a teaching tool for what we need yesterday. Hook, slide, then weak, and this. This one, pivot around to the chin, wrap it side down. In any other situation, if I was here, I would go straight down, more efficient. For our teaching purposes, we're just gonna wrap it around the head. Go straight down. So if I had his head here, and I'm trying to smash his head to the ground, if I went straight down, it would just squat me back up. So that means I'm anytime I have to take his energy forward, it's a downward slope. So here, it's a downward slope. Anytime I take his energy backwards, it needs to go straight. Because if I went downward slope here, he catches himself <coughs> this way. Right, that's just how the body works. If I'm doing this, I'm gonna do that. If I do this, I'm gonna so anytime I go forward, I gotta make him fall forward. And anytime I go back, I gotta make him fall back. Straight down. Right. So when I get to this hook here and I try to take him down this way, the reason why you, some of you guys might have some difficulty, first you have to hook him and get his posture off. And then from here, I gotta make sure his eyes go towards the ceiling. So you claw his face, you do that. It's perfect. I like hooking under the chin if I can. Worst case scenario, bare minimum, turn the chin. And once I get straight up and down, I go put his head where his feet is. Right. That makes sense? Thank you. That's that's another concept, but it's it's related. This is the only drill we're gonna do towards with that, but that's like that could be another ten hours of work just for that. You know? yeah. So just keep that in mind or Memorize that saying, if I go forward, angle down, go backwards to the face, right? From here, I gotta turn his head up. Now from here, I just anchor dead weight. And again, I'm not doing this, I'm just doing this. Right? I'm anchoring myself to him, dead weight my body down. Great. So let's, let's try that out. Keeping in mind that after this hook, it reminds you of like when you're going fishing and you hook a, hook a fish and yeah. just rip him out of the yeah. water. When I get to here, I gotta rip him. It's like my hook catches him and then he follows me. Right? Because if I try to get to here and push him down, again, look at his face, look at his posture. There's no way. So I gotta use the momentum of my body going this way and just carry him this way. Uh, notice how he's stumbling. If I want to take him down. Now we're gonna go through a basic arm drag. If you guys don't know a basic arm drag, we're just, we're just gonna do that. But one key detail that a lot of people miss out when I do an arm drag is I want to create a bend in his elbow. A lot of people try to arm drag like this, pull your arm back. And that happens, right? So every time you feel it, pull your arm back. 
right? But if I do this, right, and then hook, pull your arm back, so I just create a little turn in the turn in the line. So the same side grab, we can do it as basic as this if you need it to. Once you get past there, pinch his elbow to your floating grip. Now I try to see the back. One more time. Same side grab. Start from the frame. Bend the elbow. If you want to go here, that's fine. But bend the elbow. Hook. Step. Pinch. That's it. If I don't pinch, once you feel this, pull your elbow back. Okay. Pull your elbow back and turn towards it. Okay. Now I'm going to pinch. Pull your elbow back and turn towards it. No, right. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I'm trying to occupy space. Still in the same orientation if it was grabbing onto me. Or if it was on here. Notice how the image is exactly the same. Or he's grabbing on it here. <coughs> Notice how the image is exactly the same. So that becomes your little uh, indicator that I can do either one of those movements regardless of where he is. If he grabs on the knees, I can still do that. I can still do that, right? I can even just rip through. I can still do the same thing. Or he's grabbing on to here. Now I gotta make sure I can still clear the arm by just ripping it off, right? Right, so these are anytime their arm is reached out or framing onto you, you can do the exact same thing. So let's just try that. So let's say I have the frame on him. I can decide to go underneath. I can decide to arm drag. Place the hand on my chest. I can decide to go underneath. I can decide to arm drag. Still creating the bend in the elbow. Right. He grabs anywhere else. Now if he's grabbing and not palming you, you gotta make sure you still have you can be able to rip that out, right? So holding this here before you go forward. And like the thing we talked about on Friday, you go towards the seat, opening of the fingers. So let's just stand in front of your partner. I go here. You have two options, underneath or arm drag. Perfect. That's in. Good. So after the arm drag, this reaches over the top. Pinch there. Yes. Perfect. Just like that. Let's try that out. A few reps of that per person. Hand on the shoulder, hand on the shoulder, over and over. Good? Okay. Right hand. Issues with this, how do I grip? <coughs> Whenever, for the arm drag, the most efficient way is to just have same side grip. So how can I reach this position? I'm either going to do the web of my thumb, pointing down, so it's here, or you come on the inside. <coughs> So kind of two options here from there. Um, the next drill we're gonna do is after I arm drag, it's gonna be a failed attempt, and the guy's gonna try to reframe me. Okay. I go over the top. It's a failed attempt. I'm gonna try to reframe. That way, you can start playing. Back and forth. If you have the framework for a drill, you can add anything else you want into it as noise, white noise. Just think about that. He can kick me, he can take, try to take me down, I frame, blah, blah, blah. But all I'm looking for is the drill, that haymaker coming to my head. He can even, we could be, be here, he can push me away, he can, that was it. He can push me away, he can kick, try to take me down. But then once he throws the haymaker, I'm back in here. And then we can play here. And then once I feel that he has pressure in, good. I can do anything I want to, boom, boom. His trigger is, is I do this, or I do this. Everything else is white noise, right? 
So that's an easy way to build a drill, make it more come more alive. So we got to hear, he's only worried about this, he's only worried about this. I can do anything else I want. Now we play, boom, right? So here I'm only worried about the haymaker. I can strike him back to you. You can only worry about one of those two options. Right? This is where it gets kind of kind of hard, right? Because then you gotta figure out how can I how can I do what I want to do while he's doing what he wants to do. Right? So we're both gonna try to go for a frame to underneath and a frame to underhook. He's trying to do it to me as well. And all the other things apply. If he sees my back, I gotta turn his face. If he gets my posture down, I gotta bring it back up. If he occupies my space, I need to figure out a way to occupy his space. All while trying to figure out how to clear the arm. Right? I'll go to the light. I always say that. I'll go, I'll go to the light. We're both looking for this or this, but we're starting from here. Everything else is still fair game. Well, 
At the same time, if I get to this, I'm gonna rotate it as well. It's kind of like a headlock, right? That's why headlocks are so, work so well. Because they're not just holding the guy down like this. If I went his head looking towards the ground, he could still lift me up. But if I went this way and then started rotating, now it's it's a lot harder to get his spine straight. Or do anything. Or advanced, advanced stuff. Which is, which is cool because we call those like our core concepts. Um, anchored dead weight, occupied space, opposite directions. That rotation is an opposite direction. That's the next Going one way and then the other. Posture control. That was a posture control type of thing. And then you realize they all kind of just mix in with each other. You can't have one without the other. Um, and those are the things that in a confrontation you want to have command of all four. So let's say I'm trying to rotate him, it doesn't work. I don't have his posture. Okay. So that's kind of the whole thing about it. I try to take down I don't have his posture control. I start I tried controlling his posture. I haven't rotated yet. He's still not going down. I try I rotate him, still doesn't work. I haven't occupied his face. These are like checklists that should come up. So that means, boom, boom, this is how that works. I occupied his space, I rotated here, or opposite directions here, I anchored and dead weighted, and, I, and that arm drag controlled his watch. Four things worked out, and he fell to the floor. Right? So that's a good way to think about why is my technique not working? Right? Exact same thing. You guys. And then since your hands are here trapping those non-punching arms, you always want to try to figure out a way to rotate his level in. So you guys know the structure is here. So if I break down his structure here, his weaker, his posture's off, his posture's off. So anytime you can create that, that little turn of his elbow inward, it's going to be, you're going to be able to dominate his posture. So let's say he throws a kick and I, I do the same thing, right? He throws another kick, I do the same thing. He throws, he, he dives into the head. I do the same thing, right? All the concept is, energy is going towards you, you redirect it the other way. Knife attack is the same thing, right? It's the same thing. As long as I redirect his energy while turning my body a different direction. And then with that footwork drill that we just did, you're coming right back to me. So like these kind of movements, they're they're really all the same, right? It just depends on where it, where they give the ebb and flow of the movement is, because you have the movements, the techniques that stop right here. You have ones that allow you to kind of carry these through. So it's all dictated on pretty good on what what's able to happen, right? If you have somebody who's really strong and they're coming in on you like that, and you're like this, well, this is as far as you can get once your hand is hooked here, right? But I can turn, I can rip up and turn and come down on it, right? And then I'm over on top. If you have an appendage here and he's trying to, you know, bear out, bear down on me again, and I come this way, right? Then I can push again, kind of a deal, right? So my movement is this no longer stops here, no longer drives down here into the floor, but then I redirect this back over the top, right? So then we're still doing this pivoting, coming back this way. It's gonna happen like all at the same time, simultaneously, right? So there was a fun snap kick. Same thing that if I take it down here. It's the same type of movement. His energy is going forward. I caught it with my own hand. And I can still take him down this way as well. <coughs> so don't do stuff on these as being like drills that can only be used in this situation. This just happens to be one where it happens a lot. And it's really, really similar to uh, just like wrestling in general kind of stuff. So it makes a lot of sense. Now this stuff, make sure you're, like your posture, you're basically doing, you're doing this thing with your body. Right, you're making it carry. So if Michael was trying to do his double on me, I'm not gonna be like this, hanging on my back, that to go up on me. Right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this. Like, so my posture doesn't ever do this on my back. So the only time my posture can do this on my back is if I'm trying to get away from them, and I'm trying to do this, and it's only just to come back up, right? But if I'm receiving, I don't ever want to be like this. It's going to barrel you over. It's going to be like that. 
right? So here I can I can weather this all day like this. My feet are active, right? So I'm able to switch my head to the back. This just gives you other things to look on to, right? So these movements here happen all the time, right? Check there. It's just a thing you gotta slip by, right? So I, I see a lot of people trying to go like get get out of it so that they can move this arm. This thing, there's energy going this way, so any little tap is just gonna get it off his line, right? Right? He's leading into me, so I'm pretty much falling into him. So if I know that, I just gotta make sure this is just doing that for me. And I'm just redirecting his energy. That laser that goes infinite is not gonna go infinitely that way. It's gonna give me a little space to go underneath it. But if he's heavy attention, that's great for me, right? Because it gets to slip. The harder he pushes, the, the faster that slingshot effect is going to be. Like, I'm going to go through every block. Okay. Right? So, I'm, I'm just going to pivot out on stuff. Like, and I'll, it won't play like that. And you can do both sides, cross, whatever. So then you can be like, oh, okay, what about stuff that looks really got there, right? So. He's pushing. And then you start seeing like, all this shit's like, okay, yeah, that, <laughs> that could definitely work, right? Okay. Here I stick in too close, and then it's my elbow that's taking him down. It just means that I have a more solid structure to take him his top part down, but I gotta make sure the opposite direction is working on the bottom too. So that means I can't do it from here. Because it's his his occupying his space is on top of me, his bubbles on top of me. So I gotta figure out a way to step through and go straight down. But if I didn't go too far forward and I'm just here, you have the opportunity to go for the chin, right? So wherever the head turns, the body follows. And to turn the head, go to the chin. It's another rule of thumb. So as I'm here, I'm going to figure out a way to rotate and take it down this way. That's why you see a lot of the hanchi has this little hook to it, right? As I go across, it's kind of like you're pulling something in. Rotate. Another detail here is don't have this hand behind or just here. This has to sink back, just like the kata shows. It's that pulling hand, boom. Hyper extends the elbow here so that his chest opens up and it's gonna help me do this. As you guys notice when I do this, his chest opens up. When I turn it, his chest opens up. All these little details there, it's actually, if I go this way, his chest closes up, right? So I gotta figure out a way to open this up. those things are going to make the takedown so much easier. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to have to push through it or anything like that. It's turn, crank the, crank the elbow, turn the chin, and then drop your center. That's it. Yeah. So this kind of grip stuff, turning is pretty important. Uh, using your body as a place to like hit, like he, if he's going to turn it up, you can use your body to kind of leverage that arm up the way you want it to. Because if I hold it, said it's pretty hard, but Twists his body, he can make my hand do it. You can use that as like, kind of like a trick to kind of like kind of cinch it over. Right. So, any point, you got to start thinking of like any, any point in your body that you can use as a leverage point is a leverage point. Right. It doesn't matter if it's like your belly, your shoulder, or whatever, or your head. Everything can be used. Right. Everything's a tool for attack, everything's a tool for defense. Everything, everything. So, cool. Let's try it out. I'm gonna go to the shoulder, I'll try to do something else. But still, my goal is to mess with this posture. So, you can kind of think the name of the game, the thing at the back of your head, in every single confrontation, dominate the posture, maintain your own posture, right? Everything that we're doing opposite direction is occupying space, anchored dead weight, is so that we can maintain our posture and dominate this pressure. Like it's, 
it's one thing if you if 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 you create a frame, if I create a frame here where I can hold them this way, that's not bad. This is better, right? Because it's harder for him to like, right? You force him to do you can force him to do that. So he does that, ah, right? Kind of a deal. But stages and stages, so this isn't bad, this is better, this is way better, right? And so it's just always, always, always pulling that posture down. That's why it's super important for you to keep that posture up. You mentioned this the other day, but our sensei had a, had a skill to be able to like climb over us, we felt. Like we're getting, we're getting ripped down every single time. Yeah, it was time. very, very crumple us into a ball. And that feel pleasant. That was weird. Yeah, like he had this weird way of just Doing into your center like that, like, it, like cranking your head. It was very unpleasant. Not myself, like this. Keep but, uh, yeah, so you want to think that everything's here. And I'm pulling always, everything that I grab is a tug. <coughs> that tells you what grip strength is vital, which is why the Okinawans have so many gripping tools, right? And then getting grips off of you. Knowing which grips are really bad for you, knowing which grips you can, you can deal with. I can deal with you guys on this. I can kind of deal with this. You guys behind my head, maybe not. You guys behind my belt, maybe not. But if you guys onto my shoulder, yeah, I can deal with this for a little bit. You know? So anytime someone grabs behind my head, it's usually slip or 